This is the Relevant Podcast. It's episode 1,156, and it's the Relevant Podcast here in Orlando. I'm your host, Cameron Strang, and joining me from Loverland, Virginia, is Jesse Carey. Hello, hello. From Nashville, artist, producer, mogul, Derek Miner. He's back. What's up? It's been too long. And from LA, you know from Social Club Misfits, it's Marty. You caught me. What? <laughs> what does that even mean? I've been new ones out every week, and so that was just this <laughs> week I wrote it down. And I, <laughs> you caught me. You got nah, that's me. not the, yeah. that's not it, bro. That's not oh, it. for fifty three. I mean, I can go in next week's where it's uh, reporting for duty. That's my other. That was next I like week. It. So I mean, I don't sure. know. That's Jesse. that's crazier than your Gaither's take. I'm not even gonna lie. It's <laughs> much, cra- yeah, you it's much that. crazier <laughs> than the Gaither's take. The, the Gaither's, Gaither's take being, if y'all missed the episode, uh-huh. that that Marty has the music industry cut into two tiers. Basically, all the cool artists that you should care about are for the people under 40. And then once you hit 40, you only listen to Gaithers. That's his theory. Yeah. So you got to understand how many DMS I've got. <laughs> yeah. Someone was like trying to be like, listen, I agree with you. Like this lady was like, I, I kind of agree with you on that one. And then another one was like, I think everyone misunderstood what you said. And so appreciate those. Okay. I have a question for you guys real quick. This is unrelated to the Gaithers, but just life in, in 2024. Um, yeah. uh-huh. And this isn't a complaint. It's just an observation. And I, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my demeanor that brings it upon myself. Does it feel like anytime you're in, I don't know. And I don't know if it's like the, the a post-COVID thing where, you know, the renormalization stuff. I don't know if it's because most people buy stuff online these days and like retail experiences just aren't, you know, something that people think about. Has anyone noticed like face-to-face customer service has gotten really weird. It's crazy. Yeah, It's crazy. I had to get new tires the other day on my car. And so I called like the tire store and I'm like, Hey, I, I needed, I didn't need to see if you got tires in stock. Here's, they were like, well, what, what size are your tires, sir? I was like, well, tell you what, I'll tell you my make and model, you know, cause I don't know. I don't know the, the I don't know the tire size. Off my you don't yet. know how to read the tire code. I wasn't in, I wasn't, I don't, I didn't have oh, it memorized. You were looking at your tire. Yeah, I was, I was, okay, it wasn't, got it, got it. you know, I was, you know, I was at my, I was sitting in my office, it was just on the phone, and I, yeah, I was like, size, I have a size 20, 20 rib <laughs> yeah. with the, 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 the like, yeah. that's what you expect me, Cameron. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> no, no, no. I thought he was saying, like, he was at his car and he was calling, like, oh. he was looking no, no. at the tire, and it was like, the tire no, tells you hold, its size. I'm on, hold for, I'm on hold for 15 minutes. You know okay, what I mean? So you so wandered finally, away from the tire. Got it. Yeah, okay. so, so I'm right, sitting right, here right. And, and I'm like, well, tell you what, I'll tell you my make and They go, what size is your tire, sir? And I was like, tell you what. I'll tell you my make and model, mm. but I don't know it. I'm sure you have something that you can type it in and it'll tell you what size I need here. You know what Not I mean? Not true because a Toyota Corolla could have 15 inch rims on one package, 16 inch rims on a higher up I, package. True. I know the package. I, I and I was and, <laughs> and we went back and forth, and I was like, "I'm just gonna have to walk outside, aren't I?" He's like, "Yeah, if you want yes. tires, you're gonna have to go walk outside." Oh, yes. this, but in, and then yeah. when you finally bring it in, they act inconvenient even when you show up at your appointment. I know I sound like they don't a grumpy. Even know who you are? You know, I think like, a what? tire store is a unique situation. It's always been like that. No, this now, is I mean, the Walmart uh, Tire Supercenter. Okay, uh, that explains a little bit more. No, but I called context. everywhere I called. It was just a big inconvenience. It was like people felt inconvenience about having to do the, the service that they're advertised. But I don't think it's just with tires. I feel like a lot of interactions are just getting a little yeah. weird. No, like I saw some the other day and I was like, wow, this is a fact. All right. So Keith Lee was like, hey, I'm in Canada. Someone recommended a, a, a place to eat. He goes, as soon as I call, the lady goes, I'm hung over. So I might miss a couple things. I'm like, <laughs> That Yo! is that is like it. That is what that is in California. They do that a lot. Like someone like the trying the customers trying to relate to you like in a cool way. So they're like telling you stuff that you don't need to understand. It's like you go to Nordstrom and she's like, I just worked out all day, so my back hurts. So please don't make me work too hard. I'm like, what, you have a name tag. Your clothes match the building. Like I don't I don't well, know how else I could. <laughs> and here's the thing. Uh, that's crazy work. <laughs> I know we're in like the peak Karen era right now where people who work in like retail or service, they got to put up with stuff all day. Right. I yeah. get that. But I'm not one yeah. of those people. Cameron, you've been shopping you, or gone to restaurants with me. I feel like I'm pretty affable, pretty chatty. I like to I like to learn a little bit. You're about the sort of customer where by the end of the meal, the cool waiter sits down at the booth with yeah. you. 
you know, like like he's uh, he's your buddy Reynolds. at that point. He's yeah. Sit down with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just. But that's but that's why I'm like, what's happening here? I'm not one of the bad. I'm not one of the jerks. I'm not the one in here making a big. I'm not the. Let me see the manager. I'm. I. You know, <laughs> you can make a lot of mistakes, and I'll let it slide. I get it. I'm just trying to have a personal interaction here. It feels mm. like no one wants personal interactions anymore. Maybe I don't no. know. Is this a shared experience though, or being black and and chasing and going to like soul food restaurants, Jamaican restaurants, that's been the customer service for forever. Yeah. So just knowing that the the white people are now joining the Jamaican restaurants is <laughs> that means we're in bad shape, y'all. If, if you go to a Jamaican restaurant and they they don't have half of the stuff, then you're at an authentic Jamaican spot. If they don't have one through seven on the menu out of 14, <laughs> you're at a legit Jamaican. All they have is what they made in the bar. You know, like they have yes. like the, it's like behind the glass. They can't do a, a jerk chicken quesadilla for you. I'm sorry. That's just not no. going to happen today. And the food is about to slap. So, yes. But if the white restaurants, if that's happening at the, mm-hmm. if that's happening at like Chipotle's and Chick Fil A's oh, yeah. and tire that's shops totally and sure. places like that, then hot topic. we're in hot topic. Listen, <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned Chick Fil A because not only did I not get my pleasure yesterday, okay, mm. that mm. that alone is a re- is a huge cultural red flag. Yeah, okay, be you, careful what you just said. What did you say? I didn't get my pleasure, and I make no apologies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You guys know exactly what I mean. No, I know. I get it. I and so, so, I don't think it's about you having pleasure. The Chick Fil A person says it's my pleasure to it, serve well, you. Here's the thing: I'm, but I, I didn't even say it to him. They didn't even say it, and they're on the iPad. He said he didn't get my pleasure. Oh, I thought you were saying didn't you didn't get, get the, your pleasure by going to Chick Fil A. No, no, they didn't repeat it back right. to him. Got it. Okay. They, 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 they're, they're, not only that, they're on the iPad, right? It was yeah. the drive-through iPad situation, which yeah. I appreciate. You keep it moving, yeah. but. And I'm like, I want this with a with a small milkshake. I want this with a small milkshake. So you're like, so you want two milkshakes? I was like, well, yeah, but I'm, but I, you know, I'm They're ordering. Different. The, yeah, <laughs> it, it, why are you making me feel weird? Like, just it, yeah. you know, it, it, it just it was very unchick fil a like, and yeah, and it was like, go ahead and pull forward. <laughs> and it, it just. I don't know. Something's happening out there. It, Something's we're, we're, happening, man. I went to Claire's to get my ears pierced the other day. Oh my gosh. And I'm just kidding. No, that didn't happen. Have you ever? Have you ever gotten your ears pierced no, at Claire? Be no, honest. No, I haven't. My first ear piercing when I was 18 was, was at a Claire's. Claire's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I saw a shirt that said, I got my nose pierced at Claire's. And I was like, I should buy that shirt. <laughs> I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how just to make people just out in the wild a little nicer again. And I don't know what specifically changed. But it just seems like everyone's got a little little edge to them these days. You got to be a, a white woman who's twenty one. You'll get the best. They call it pretty privilege. You'll, there's, that's a real thing, and you'll get the best customer service you ever had. Um, but sorry, I think I think honestly, like inflation has made it so much less worth it to work a fast food level in paying job. Yeah, or a customer service paying job that it's like. They're annoyed. They're not making ends meet. They're struggling. They're stressed out. Then they have to deal with these idiots. Like everybody would be on edge in that position. I'm in now. California. Minimum wage is twenty dollars, though. Just yeah, a week ago, a week ago, <laughs> it became twenty dollars. Everyone's but, making yeah. money now, baby. No, no, no. Everyone's I, getting look, their nose pierced. I just came back from L.A. They need to up the minimum wage beyond twenty dollars. Like twenty dollars <laughs> ain't gonna get it. Like no, it's crazy. It's going to be like sixty. Like, cause it's crazy, bro. It's crazy in LA. Like, I don't know. I don't know how y'all do it. Like I much love, but I mean, you're getting taxed every which way from Sunday. And then everything is like, bro, I saw gas was like $7 in one part of LA. That's because like, you guys are also crazy. at like LAX area and like the Holly, like the hipster really, you're at a very, you know, very, uh, when people come in, I forgot the word. When people come out of town, like they go there to that spot. Um, yeah, it's like it's like the resort area in Orlando yeah, is going like to charge way more. Than- Seven dollars nowhere in Middle Tennessee. Yeah. yeah, anywhere. I mean, gas by me is like four twenty, four twenty nine right now. There, by our airport, like it's famous. Yeah. The two or three uh, gas stations right next to the airport where you return your rental car. Literally, yeah. if gas is three ninety nine, half a mile away, they're going to charge nine or ten dollars. Yeah, and they it's, do, you it's said bad nine like that or ten dollars, no, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. They do it to like take advantage of that last minute. He's rushing to the airport. Got to return my rental car. He's rent he has it, no yeah. option, and he thinks it's nine dollars. And so he's yeah. going to go home and complain about the gas price in Orlando. It's just because it was by the airport. Uh, you were I'll just say, in the high rent area, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. Areas. I'll say this. The the only 
and this is my experience out in the wild here. <clears throat> if you want a, like a, just a, a nice, genuine interaction, find the oldest person possible. I'm talking north of 80. Like, <laughs> like, because I got wiper blades too when I was getting my tires, and, and I've purposely sought out the cash register with the super old guy, you know? Listen, it took a long time for him to figure out how to actually complete the transaction, you know? Um, but I will say this. It was friendly. He was asking about my day. It's like you go to the hardware store. You find the oldest employee there. You'll get the best service of your life. They'll, they'll be giving you, it'll, it'll give you instructions on how to do the project. <laughs> I think most of them, because it's just this is this is what they're doing to entertain themselves is work in these, uh, you know, positions. But Right. That, they're not stressed out. Like, they're not like trying to make it. Out. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. All right, well, we have a great show in store for you today. Coming up later, we talk to pastor, author, former NFL player, Derwin Gray. Uh, Jesse, we booked this interview specifically for you. you this is an intervention. Good. He, yeah. you know, obviously Super Bowl just ended, March Madness yeah. just ended. Everything has changed with legal sports yeah. betting and, and how sports betting has been integrated in the sports experience online and on TV. And uh, that's bothering former athlete and pastor Derwin Gray. Wow. He thinks mm. that we need to talk about this. I thought Jesse needs to hear this interview. I, so he's coming up later. He doesn't have a book on it or anything. He just had some tweets and we just caught our eye and we just like, well, let's dang. have him on. Let's talk about I, it. I, I refuse <laughs> to listen to something that will challenge me in any kind of way morally yeah, <laughs> with, with a harmless hobby that I'm jeopardizing my children's future participating in so i did say jesse this is for real you did come up in our conversation about this booking this interview and i was like here's what we have to know is like we need to ask pastor gray we need to ask derwin like like it's not is it problematic for every or is it if it's in moderation if you yeah. have like for example i know jesse he's very interested <sighs> in parlays and and sports betting and things like yeah. that but he bets like two dollars it. yeah. so it's like he doesn't he's right. not jeopardizing anything for Why his family does it not matter you know 200 two thousand well that's I what mean, but it know. does matter like in <laughs> context if you yes. only have two dollars maybe you shouldn't gamble with it but if you have a normal income what's the problem with two dollars let's talk to him about that so it, well it, and ask the Jesse Carey scenario does come up in the conversation <laughs> well good because ask him about this. <laughs> Tiger last week was catching five dollars to win six hundred if he wins the Masters. I've I've got a good steward of my resources if I don't place that in my <laughs> finger. <laughs> He's rocking the steward of your money, Jesse. If you don't place that bet, He's rocking Sunday. He's like watching it. the new Sunday Red out there. Come on, come on now. That's that's Crimson seems like, Red. Yeah, that, I that's, saw Dave Portnoy, the founder of Barstool Sports. He uh, uh, like two weeks before the tournament put yeah. a bet on UConn to win it all. Six hundred thousand dollars he put in. Whoa. The guy Good has like over a hundred yeah. million. It's still a yeah. big bet, but it, you know, he and he bets a lot, so he's got yeah. his gambling money. So he put six hundred thousand. He won two point seven million dollars. Yeah. Wow. Two weeks later, wow. like yeah. seems like you know, wow. that's what I'm saying. But we're going to be talking mm -hmm. next week when Tigers wow. got that green jacket, and I'm you know I got a little extra dinner money, and he's not going to we'll, make the cut. By the time this comes out, we'll know if he made the cut or he not. He looks. Hey, listen, I've been following yeah. very closely since last week. He seems yeah. to be doing really well. He's he's 48 Until years old. Until he gets a lower back cramp, and then he doesn't play for his the next ankles four years. in pretty bad shape. Mm. Um, Son's doing good. Yeah, his son Sounds looks good. phenomenal. So we'll see. We'll see. He's All like right. a normal looking version of Tiger Woods. His son, yeah. like his son, you know, like it just like Tiger has like a weird stare with one eye. It's like a, it's an interesting look. And look at his mugshot. <laughs> You'll more. see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Look at his mugshot. But his son, his handsome dude, plays well. Good to see somebody out there. What does their looks have to do with anything? You're what's wrong with our it culture, Marty. No, it does. It does. As soon as he started looking a little crazier, like his career, everything, like he started having affairs. He started like it, it, it triggers back to whatever made him look like that. Really. You know what? You know, the Tiger, when, as he aged, he aged like Carrot Top, where like he was skinny, mm. thin, young looking. And then all of a sudden he decided, I want to get jacked. And yeah. it just doesn't look yes. right on his frame. Then he took know? off the hat. That's another thing. Like, you can't <laughs> surprise us by taking off your hat when we're not used to – like, you can't be Neo. We always have a hat on in everything you do. Right? Well, as far as I know, he's going to be hatted for the Masters, and he's looking yes. great, and I <laughs> well, don't Well, he's care. not looking great according to Marty. Yeah. Face-wise. Yeah, but – but it's no fair to compare a mugshot version of anyone. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, any, anyone's yeah. like, you yeah, know, they didn't look great in the mugshot. Well, what do you think? They, they are, I have his mugshot on a shirt, Jesse. I don't know if that matters at all to this conversation, but. Speaking <laughs> of mugshots, uh, Hootie from Hootie and the Blowfish went to jail not too long ago. DUI. Hey, really? Yeah, he's, he's real country. Him, 
him and Morgan Wallen, but they use his mugshot, and his mugshot is awful. Ooh. <laughs> it's terrible, bro. But, but like, mugshots, mugshots aren't. But, it's bad because especially when you when you're used to seeing someone with concert stuff on, like they're at their peak. Like you're seeing them on stage, got their haircut. Yes, mugshot right. is like a it's like a Tuesday at the gas station. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And it, at 3 a.m. Okay. You know what I mean? It's bad. He, here's here's yeah, my. That's a tough one, man. Here's my observation about mugshots, and I only know this from I don't know a lot of firsthand. It's all celebrity stuff. When when a celebrity looks terrible in a mugshot, I'm like, okay, obviously they were at a low point. They made a mistake. When a celebrity mm-hmm. looks good and is smiling in a mugshot, that's a huge red flag. That means that person is probably a legit sociopath. Like <laughs> the only people when you're like, is that a glamour shot? Is this a port? How did they get a headshot? <laughs> How did they? <laughs> That's true. They've Big been facts. there before. They've been there before. Exactly. If the photo gets but better, like if they're if know? they're all sweaty and disheveled, it's like oh they've had a bad night. They, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they know the, they but, but, know the tilt. But you see some people like oh you know what? they just had a bad night. Who among us you know like hey, hasn't thrown right. a chair off a roof? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got a while. But when they're smiling and look good, within their eyes are real wide. You're like oh boy, they did whatever whatever they're yeah. accused of. They absolutely did it. A like the Winona Ryder chance. shoplifting mugshot. Yeah. Oh, she tough. was like I've been doing this my whole life. Who cares? Yeah. Oh. Anyway, all right, Duran Gray, gonna put some conviction in y'all sports betters coming up. <laughs> no, <laughs> skip. But stay tuned. Up next, Emily joins us for Relevant Buzz. And this episode is brought to you by DraftKings.com. <laughs> Offer <laughs> your first bet is free. Listening to DJ Gummy Bear and Montel Fish. The song is Rockin' My World. Well, today's show is brought to you in part by Crown College, a boldly Christian and academically excellent college providing a lifelong, authentic community. Crown offers on campus, online, and graduate programs, 18 NCAA Division III sports, international service opportunities, and a vibrant student life. Discover why Crown College is ranked top three in America for online Christian education. Visit crown.edu today. Okay, it's time for... Relevant Buzz. Please welcome to the show our managing editor, downtown Emily Brown. Hey, Emily. Hey, y'all. All (laughs) All right, tell us what's happening at the intersection of faith and culture this week. Um, Okay, first thing I want to talk about is a surprising new show that was the number one series on Netflix the week it premiered. And I say surprising because it was just pretty unexpected. It's called Testament, the Story of Moses. And it's a three-part docuseries about the life of Moses. Hmm. Wait, number one? Yeah, like on it ne- premiered number one on Netflix's top 10 list, not just the U.S., but like global. Never heard of it. Wow. But, but but is it in the U.S. number one or is it like some random country making it globally number one? No, it was number one in the U.S. and like I think 90 other countries. It was like wow. huge everywhere. What? Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and then I, I saw this on a press release and like from Netflix. So this is like a, Netflix's official data, which they release weekly showed that the show was number one the week it premiered and then it stayed in the top three the second week it was number two on the global charts mm. and number three in the u.s moses moses i feel I bad because not... i skipped over it to watch oh, you saw Vin it Lins. i didn't even seen it i didn't even like, know it was out there i was trying to figure out what's the name of it i saw it i saw it on the rankings like it was yeah. like you know trending this this uh week and it was like it was ranked up there okay pretty that's high, interesting but I, I, yeah. You're, you're not f- trending for you, but you're talking the number one, two, three, four rankings. You saw it, yeah, well, yeah, in the, in the, in the, on Netflix where it has the you know this show's number one, this show's number two. That yeah, oh, that I didn't for me, see it. Okay, Moses I, is up there. Yeah, th- so we've been aware of this for about a week now, and I literally because mm-hmm. it was number one and then it went number three in the U.S. And she was telling me this. And I was like, "There's no way. Like, I don't believe it. I haven't seen this on my Netflix experience at yeah. all." And I've been watching mm-hmm. some Netflix lately. I pulled up Netflix.com, logged in, looked at the one through 10, and it's not on there for me. But I haven't seen it either. Yeah. U.S. Number. How does that work? So now they're faking the top 10? So, for- so no, I, so 
I didn't see it this week. I saw it last week. It was number three. I saw it last week, number three, because I started watching. Remember, I told you I started watching a new anime. Right. And mm. and I I, I felt bad because I'm like, man, should I watch Moses or should I watch Vinland Saga? And I was like, <laughs> I'd rather watch Vikings chop each other up right now. Yeah, for so sure. Yeah. I started watching that, and Moses was like number three. I remember. I, I do remember that. I was in L.A. when I started watching it. That's wild. See, because I... I I didn't see it at all, Jesse. You didn't see it at all. No, promoted. I didn't see it all no. either. That's, crazy. That's so strange. Anyway, That's crazy. what, what crazy is it, Emily? Word. Like, is it like the Chosen? Is it like? Um, no. So it's a docu series. So there is parts of it that are acted out like the Chosen. It's very high quality, well done. But there's also expert interviews to give just some more insight and some background on Moses's life. Um, but yeah, it's just three episodes, and so that's like the whole premise of it. Obviously, yes, we're interested in it. I was surprised that this was number one around the world that, that, that so many people were also interested in this and, and watching. But you know what though, that it makes sense if they're looking at, like, if they are probably looking at the success of the chosen and they're like, Hey, we should do our version of that. Mm-hmm. It makes sense that they would pick Moses because it's not just Christian because the chosen is about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would make sense to Moses because Christians, Muslims, Jews all mm-hmm. care about mm-hmm. Moses. So Crossover. from a global audience, big- it actually makes sense. And it's around, a holy time. You know right. what I mean? Like yeah. the timing of it's great. Ramadan, Easter. Yeah, it, pre- it premiered we, uh, on Good Friday. Passover. I mean, Passover, guys. The you know what I mean? Holiday. Like, that's, boom, this boom, is boom. it. All I guess my religions. thing is Moses, Moses seems like a saturated content vertical to me. Mm. I mean, you got the Wrigley Scott one from a couple years ago with, with like the rock Aaron monsters. Paul. Yeah, that's Noah. 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 That Noah. No, but yeah. you got the one with Christian Bale, wasn't he? Exodus, Gods and Kings, Exodus. Right? Exodus. Gods and Exodus. Kings. Oh, you got, you got Kings. Charlton Heston. It just seems like we got a lot of Moses content out there. Yeah, we do yeah. a little bit too much. Let's just be honest, though. Like some of this stuff has been crazy. Like they take like a lot of liberty. Like I'm, I'm sure I didn't see the Christian Bale thing, but it looked like. It didn't make any sense. It looked like it was going to be another Noah situation where we got rock monsters and 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 all that stuff. I, I think a docu hey, series is a little different. Jesse, the rock monsters are in scripture. It it wasn't yeah. crazy. I, I don't know if I want to see men in eyeliner, you know, for like two hours. Sure. It's just a lot. It's just a lot uh, to take. I in. watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Like, <laughs> <laughs> delete. <laughs> Well, now I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued, but it's a th- yeah, just, watch Emily, show, yeah. What do we got next? Is we got three- get canceled today. Emily, Emily next. It's topic. three. Par- it's a three part docu series. Yeah, yeah three part. Yeah. I'm rolling out an album. Y'all trying to get me canceled? Keep three, going. Three parts. <laughs> three, a three part docu series is sweet spot. Sometimes I'll watch one. And if I fire it up, I'm like seven. No, no, no. Well, I don't got time for yeah, that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not getting seven into even if it's like a cool true crime conspiracy. You know, it's like, no, no, wrap it up. If you can't wrap it up in three, I'm I'm out. Moving on. (laughs) Um, Derek, you actually mentioned rolling out an album, which I wanted to talk about because like y'all been talking about for a while now, how just kind of hard it is to release music these days. It seems like everyone's trying new things and don't really know exactly what to do. All and one year, it's like the album's dead. It's just about singles, or it's like I'm mm-hmm. gonna do an EP and then tour it, and the, you know, whatever. Like it's like nobody knows how to do it anymore. But right, right. And yeah. there were a couple albums that actually were announced this week that really back up kind of what we've been saying that artists are just trying new things. And one of the biggest artists in the world is Pharrell, who dropped a whole album last week, but he did not announce it at all. Pharrell released it exclusively on a website, BlackYachtRock.com. You really only know about it by word of mouth, but when you listen to it, it's definitely Pharrell. We're actually going to play one of the songs here called Cage Bird Free. Welcome to my silver lining. It sounds like the Eagles. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It does have a Yacht Rocky, Yacht Rocky vibe. Here's what's crazy to me. It's called, okay, it's at, only available at blackyachtrock.com. It's not on any streaming platforms. It, then there's something about Virginia on the album cover. Then there's no credit given at all. Pharrell's name isn't on it. No collaborators, collaborators' names are on it. And we're sitting here like sharing it and texting it to friends like, hey, Pharrell dropped a secret album, blah, blah, blah. In this era of AI, think about the future of this. Mm. If this album drops in the future and it sounds exactly like Pharrell, we know that they can do Pharrell yeah. AI vocals. Mm. We know that. I mean, this literally could be some kid in his dorm room 
throwing this up there and all the hipster, you know, music sites are going secret Pharrell album. And it actually is not because Pharrell's never acknowledged it. Even now, a week later, he hasn't acknowledged that he dropped an album. Some, I think two of the songs were on Louis Vuitton, though, on the walk that he did. No, I know. I, this is legit. Yeah. And we but can all hear it. Know this. You're, you're but saying, like, think about oh, yeah, a year th- from you're now. Right. You're right. You're think right. about a year from now. We won't be able to know if that's actually Pharrell or not. You're going to have you're to take right. credit as an artist, you know? Yeah. That's scary. Anyway. Yeah. Like his friends yeah. promoted it. Like Tyler, the creator, and Pusha T, they shared it to their social Right. That's, so that's how we like, knew it was legit, yeah. is that his yeah. buddies who probably had a hand in it were pushing but, it out. But it is a killer album. It is. It is good vibe. Well, I mean, like, like I'll say three this. Good it's, songs. I'll say it's, it's three, a vibey. Three good songs. It's a good vibey album. Like it, some, uh, some of them are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm saying if it's if you put it <laughs> on, it is crapping on Virginia right now. It's, <laughs> yeah. How dare you? First off, how dare you? Anyway, it was interesting that one of the biggest artists in the world drops a new project and didn't tell anybody yeah. about it. That's an yeah. interesting strategy. And then he put his name on it. Yeah. You don't have any access to it unless you go to this website and play it. You know, it's so random. You know, do you remember when Kanye announced Donda 2 and mm-hmm. uh, then, you know, big, you know, whatever. Donda was great, groundbreaking, and then Donda 2. And then he decided on a whim to only make it available on his little stem machine. Yeah. So you had to buy a $200, $300 stem player, and then the album came preloaded on it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I bought it. Like, I have it. And I'm, like, excited to hear, want to be one of the few people to hear the album. It was terrible. Of really? it was like it was all the songs that weren't good enough to make Donda. You know what I mean? mean? It was the second one, which is crazy. It was terrible. It's That's like what I'm saying. Like he was doing album. exactly what Pharrell's doing. Exactly. You yeah. know, like it's not on streaming. It's you know niche, whatever. I'm like the idiot who paid three hundred dollars to hear that terrible album. <laughs> At least Pharrell can you put knows. other music on it. Yeah, yeah. You can load it. Okay, you just connect a God. USB. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can load up whatever. It's actually pretty an amazing. It's an ingenious device, but. Or you can like remove back, the vocals like if you listen and everything. To the album, and you were like, "I hate this." You don't like it. Get a you don't, <laughs> Kanye doesn't do refunds. Come on. Can you remove the stems of other songs you load on there? You load yeah, in cool. an MP3, my friend, and it will remove all. It'll you can uh, uh, manually cool. control all the stems. You can do That's karaoke. Cool. That's really yeah. cool. It's really crazy. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, there's another album that was announced this week. Billie Eilish announced her album's coming out in May. Mm. And she said she's not releasing any singles before the album drops because she wants fans to hear mm. the complete project, which I think in an era where a lot of artists are only dropping singles, it's really interesting that she's she doesn't want to give anything away. This is a great season for as far as I'm concerned. I love seasons like this. It feels like every seven or six, seven years, there's a reset in the music industry as mm. how do you release music? And I enjoy this season where there's no rules because I feel like this is where the creativity and the new stars, I feel like the next next stars for the next 10 years are going to be born now. This yeah. is when you're going to find artists that you're like, this is my guy, this is my lady. Like, this is when it happens, when everybody doesn't know what to do. Yeah. But, um, before we wrap up, I do want to mention one more thing. Um, it's kind of important. Uh, a documentary was released this week on YouTube that I want to tell you about. You know, obviously we know the modern worship scene, but in the 90s, there was a really huge worship scene exploding in the UK. Um, It's where a lot of worship artists like Delirious and Matt Redman came out of. There was a label called Worship Together. Um, And there's also a huge youth music festival called Soul Survivor that started in the 90s and was around for like 20 years. Um, Well, last year, an investigation revealed that its founder, Mike Pilavachi, was actually quite abusive. And this oh. new documentary talks about what happened and how it went on for so long. Not and like few- Mark Driscoll abusive, like sexual abuse and yeah. stuff. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Um, and a few of the victims share their story, including Matt Redman um, and his wife, Beth. We've actually got a clip from Let the Light In, which is the name of the documentary right here. For me, the hardest question to answer is why it stayed around so long. And, and it's actually very complicated and nuanced. I mean, I'm this 13-year-old boy who's, you know, been rescued out of being sexually abused so I had this undying loyalty to him for sure and also you love what God's doing through this ministry you've got this amazing groundswell this momentum in a time where they send young people are leaving the church we had tens of thousands of young people journeying with us and it was just very evident God was breathing on this it didn't feel like human momentum it felt like something beyond that it was going to be super hard to walk away from that Oh my goodness. That yeah, it's it's really crazy. Yeah, upsetting. Yeah. So like I said, they they share their story. They also call for um just greater accountability and justice for victims in the church. 
Um, like I said, it's not an easy watch, but it is an important one. And you can watch it for free on YouTube. Well, for more of what's happening at the intersection of faith and culture, uh, check out relevantmagazine.com every weekday. We're recovering all that. All right. Well, thanks, Emily. Okay. Stay tuned. Up next, Derwin Gray convicts Jesse. All right. Let's do that. <laughs> I don't receive, brother. I do not receive. You're listening to King Stingray. The song is Through the Trees. Season four of The Chosen is in theaters now, and the reviews that count are in. Amazing. Did not disappoint. Flurry of emotions. It was powerful, heartbreaking, uplifting. You have got to come and see it. It is a message for everybody. I highly recommend that you come out and see The Chosen season four. Episodes one through three of The Chosen season four are in theaters till February 14th. So visit thechosenriseup.com and get your tickets now. That's thechosenriseup.com for tickets today. Hey, if you like this podcast, but you might like it better if there were no ads, you can do that. Head over to relevantmagazine.com and sign up for Relevant Plus. For just a couple bucks a month, you get this podcast ad-free. You get ad-free unlimited reading at relevantmagazine.com, including the full podcast and magazine archives. Our beautifully designed digital issue and a little more. Uh, Check out all the info right there on the Relevant Plus tab at RelevantMagazine.com. Well, our guest today is Derwin Gray. He's an author and pastor of Transformation Church outside Charlotte. Um, Over the last few months, he's noticed the rise in sports gambling addiction, especially with young people. Uh, It's an issue that uh, he's been speaking about online, so we want to talk to him about this new trend. Here's our conversation with Derwin Gray. Well, sports betting has been on a lot of people's minds these last few weeks because of March Madness going on and the Super Bowl even before that. And there have been so many reports about the rise of sports gambling this season that it's definitely concerning. Why do you think there's been such an increase in sports gambling this year? Yeah, you know, um, I think there's been an increase in sports gambling because uh, professional sports and college sports, uh, people like to make money. And so I began to notice a couple of years ago when I would turn on ESPN or even in some of my sports apps, there was always this marketing for sports betting. Right. And so I think now with the popularity of, you know, the NFL and the NBA and you see in college, um, People are wanting to capitalize on something that's not a virtue, but a vice. And I think greed is fueling it. So you have this toxic combination of instant gratification, easy access to bet. Not only do you have the dopamine uh, injection from your smartphones, now you have the dopamine rush from sports betting. And I think we're going to see a major uptick in gambling addiction if we haven't all ready. So, you know, as a former NFL player, like I get it, the NFL exists to make money. It's a business. Um, But also you have to be cognitive of the people who could potentially have vices towards this. And so I just, I just think greed is fueling it. And the, the high that you get from gambling is like cocaine. I mean, it's the same exact thing. And so we have to be weary, but I understand from a business perspective, they feel like, hey, you know what? We might as well get the tax money and the profits instead of illegal gambling. Um, I, I just I just think it's a recipe for disaster. Absolutely. I, I do agree. Gambling is so normalized in our society, too, that a lot of people don't see it as a big deal anymore. But why is it so dangerous? <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, the first thing is, is any form of, a, of an addiction holds you in slavery. So it's going to be financial, it's going to be mental, but also when you've got teenage kids who have access to this, that there's long-term implications. Um, any addiction is going to have a negative effect on your soul. It's going to have an effect, negative effect on your 
on your family, um, all around. It is just not a good thing. And so I don't like the idea that professional sports are partnering with them, right? Um, even when I played in the NFL, there was always, um, from 1993 to 1998, as an NFL player, before the season starts in training camp, you always have this conversation about uh, gambling and betting and it's off limits for, for, for us. Um, I think it's a recipe for disaster, but unfortunately, people care about money more than they care about people's souls. You, know, you mentioned teenagers are becoming addicted to it, and there's a lot of studies that show young people are the most likely to be addicted towards gambling. Why do you think they're so susceptible to it? Well, I think uh, you know I don't I don't have any scientific data, but my intuition tells me one is they design the apps to look like games. That's one. Number two, um, when you bet, it does create this dopamine rush. You know, um, I have a really good friend. His name is Dr. Daniel Amen. He's one of the world leading neuroscientists. And so I was explaining to him that I love fishing. And I was saying my favorite part of fishing is not actually when I'm reeling in the fish. The favorite part is when I set the hook of what that fish could be. And he goes, that's called dopamine, Derwin. He goes, he goes, it's the excitement of the dopamine of it may be the biggest fish you've ever caught. It may be a fish you've never caught before. And so the best part about it is the surprise of what it's going to be. And so that dopamine rush is like it creates these feelings. And so, you know, from a gambling perspective, getting more and more dopamine rushes, you're chasing what is it like for me to win? Right. And so. Teenagers, particularly young men, their brains don't develop until they're like 25 to 27. And so we're putting that that resource in their in their hands. So the best way to combat something is always teach. Right. And so as parents, we need to to teach about it. We need to educate in a form about it. But ultimately, when you legalize sports betting, what you're saying is, well, it's better for companies to make the money. It's better for the government to get the taxes than for it to be under the table. And so you're not really, you're helping people after they get addicted. Now, I do want to ask you this. What about the guy who bets $2 on games here and there, or a group of friends who make fantasy football teams, but with really low stakes? Is that dangerous too, or is that not really the issue we're talking about here? Well, I, I think it's all independent on the person and their spiritual maturity and their wiring. So for me, I don't gamble. Um, but, you know, if you're betting small amounts, you know, I mean, I just I just like why, just why, right? Um, and what I'm more talking about is not just on the side with your buddies. I'm talking about a consistent rhythm of being preoccupied with betting versus, hey, you know, um, if my school, Brigham Young, beats Utah, then a Utah football player has to buy me a steak. If we win or if they win, I buy them a steak. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is you've got the apps downloaded, you're following multiple teams, you got parlays. I'm talking about where it is overwhelming you, but that could be the way that it starts. I don't know. It depends on the disposition. You know, if you have a history of addiction in your family, probably not a good idea. If there's people in your family who've had a history, history of gambling addiction, probably not a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I have definitely seen people who started off casually betting on games becoming addicts. For someone listening to this who, you know, maybe they don't have a full blown addiction, but they're definitely walking toward that path. Do you have any advice on how to course correct and get help? Yeah, you know, so, um, I am a, I am unapologetically a Jesus guy, a gospel guy. And I think at the end of the day, all of us are looking for something that this world has no capacity to give. All of us are looking for love. We're looking for purpose. We're looking for validation. We're looking for happiness. And 
I believe that the person of Jesus Christ is the ultimate love. I believe the person of Jesus Christ is the ultimate validation. I believe that he's the ultimate happiness and happiness isn't always smiling. Happiness is a deep seated purpose in alignment with God. And so what I would say to someone who has a need or feels a compulsion to bet, what happiness are you chasing? What do you think the money's going to give you? What do you think the dopamine high is going to give you? Because the reality is, um, you know, the more you splash yourself with dopamine, you're going to need it more. Dopamine was designed by God to be a slow drip for fight or flight, right? So it's not designed just right? So, so what is it that you're looking for in gambling that you don't think that Jesus can give you? So that's, that's number one, where I would start. Number two, if you are in full blown addiction, there is no shame in asking for help at 53 years old. I believe the strongest people are the people who quickly ask for help. Hey, give me direction. Show me the way because weakness is the ultimate sign of strength because Jesus can only help people who are weak enough to ask for it. And that's when we're stronger. Number three is I would actually take some time to study the neuroscience of gambling, um, the neuroscience of dopamine hit and what that does to your body. Like you literally have withdrawals and, and even with our smartphones, like um, our smartphones and particularly social media apps are designed to give us dopamine hits so that we can be on our phones more because social media companies aren't giving us their apps for free. We are the product. And, and so it is, it is finding ourselves in a rhythm of God's grace. When we feel longings that we think creation can give to us. We go, no, no, only God can give me this. Right. And so I, I enjoy sports. I love sports. It's a, it's a beautiful, all of creation God created and it was good. And we just have to be wise because, um, there's, there's a lot of people who've lost things and I've had former teammates as NFL players. When you get done playing, you don't have that dopamine rush that you had from playing. And I've seen a lot of my friends lose a lot of money looking for chasing that rush in casinos. was Derwin Gray. Uh, he didn't come on to promote anything, but make sure to follow him on social media and check out his most recent book from 2022. It's called How to Heal a Racial Divide. All right, stay tuned. Up next, it's your feedback. You're listening to D4VD. The song is My House Is Not a Home. Well, Relevant has a lot happening this year, and we don't want you to miss a thing. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter right there on the front page at relevantmagazine.com, and we'll send you our top five trending stories sent to your inbox every weekday. We'll also send you a weekly uh, podcast newsletter with the latest episodes, some uh, fan extras, and first peeks at the new shows that we're going to be rolling out throughout this year. Make sure to sign up. It's the best way to keep in touch with everything we got going on. It's time for your feedback. Um, last week, we asked you the most annoying or absurd thing you've experienced at a concert or a large gathering. You heard us at the beginning of the show reference the Gaither conversation. It led into the concert going conversation and how people over 40 <laughs> like to sit down. Um, and so Jesse advocated for stools, mm -hmm. uh, chair pants, and other things at a concert. This should be more prevalent and more common. Uh, but we thought about uh, concert experiences where like you're in the pit and you're stuck behind somebody with their girlfriend on their shoulders. You can't see anything. What's the most annoying or absurd thing you've experienced at a large gathering or concert? You hit us up on X at Relevant Podcast. Here's a few of our favorites. Alex brings up a good point here. And I think, yeah, I think he's on to something. He said, tall people making their way up to the front. 
I propose <laughs> a system that is height. It needs to be like a group photo. If it, you're it, tall, it, it's like a, it's like a junior high basketball yes. photo. You yeah. know, like <laughs> you put the tall Wait guys. Wait a second. In no, the back. no, that's no. not fair. It is fair. It I is paid fair. my. I, just, I can't help it that I'm six two. I paid the same amount of money you short. All right, well, I'll put it this way: if that's the case, short people should pay more money. I don't know. I think. I think. I think this <laughs> yeah. is one situation where it's height based discrimination based no. on just the the physics of sight line. You know? Short people got to pay more money. I'll do it. Short people got to pay Derek more money. Derek is the guy who doesn't return his shopping cart after he puts his groceries in the trunk. He just leaves mm. it there because he's That's like, cap. I paid, my, That's I pay my money. Because good people who care That's about cap. others will go return the shopping cart. If you're yeah. a good person who care about others, no, no, you're, no, no, you're going to be in the back. No, you're going to be in the back. No, no, Derek. no, no, no. Think I about the short, the short king cart. who can't see I'm in because you're standing in front of him. But what I'm saying is, I'm saying this. If you're, if you're like, I want to make sure that I could see it's almost like what's that the uh the Disney pass or whatever. We all paid the same price for the tickets, but if you want a front row in front of all the tall people, uh-huh. then I think you should pay the <laughs> fast they pass so see. you can get they, to the they front. can't see the show. So like, they have to pay more to live because they're yeah, short. They, That's not fair. Guys. I have to pay more to live too. I gotta send them little <laughs> seats on that airplane. We they don't they don't give me a reduction because like the them Delta system. seats is, is smaller. I got to sit on there. You done folded your knees into your into your chest and then took a whole nap with a blanket. You know, steady show that taller people make more price money. I, I like the height Steady show taller hey, people make more money. Fair. And I'm trying to keep it. So <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with uh, Adam Davis. I like this one. Scr- this also applies to church concerts. Screaming the lyrics so you can't even hear the actual music. I didn't yeah. pay this amount of money to hear right. you incoherently yell over the band. This happens to me at church. You have people like the person next to you who's just like over like they have the little uh remember Will Ferrell in old school with that little tassel thing that was like moving around like you always have those like people with the flag at church. They're singing so loud that you're like, what do you you know, and I, then sometimes they mess up the lyrics and I'm like, what do you you know? I, I a saw a video and I didn't really dig into it. I was scrolling. Um it was like a short or whatever. And uh it was someone <laughs> It was someone had filmed from the front row of a church service during worship, and someone had brought their own saxophone and was just freewheeling during, yeah. with the band. I saw that too. It looks exactly like my buddy Evan. We were dying. We were freewheeling. And I'll be honest. Front row, baby. Can I be honest? It totally elevated the whole thing. He was good. It wasn't like he was winging it. Like, he this was, was a good. real sax player. Like, I was like, dang, what? man. I, th- I, think all, I think all these bands should have sax players. Like, it was, it, it made, it, I was like into it, into it. Like, it, Marty, you heard it. It was some good yeah, sax yeah. player. It was like, I didn't know you could get captured this vibe <laughs> yeah. in, in like a worship setting. Like, it was, said, it was smooth. I said that to a buddy, and he was like, that actually had happened at my church in Miami, Trinity, where someone decided to bring a violin and just <laughs> randomly start playing in the middle of service. Here's the thing about saxophone, and, and it's hard. Like, I challenge people to go listen to just smooth sax playing after this because you know when the when the pastor comes up and it's like someone either jumps on the keyboard or the acoustic guitar yeah. and it's about to get sentimental and we're going we're gonna to bring it home? Yeah. Sax is a whole different vibe for that moment. It is. I mean, it is <laughs> like, ooh, man, everyone's, hey, coming, up. everyone's coming up. Like, hey, you're you're shut, shut your eyes, girl. That's what I'm saying. Every head battle around the clothes, ladies and gentlemen. I, I get like, the you know, growing up charismatic and Pentecostal churches, like the ladies would bring their tambourines and stuff and they're going to contribute mm-hmm. that way. I, but when you go to charismatic conferences, somebody's bringing a shofar and there may be multiple, yeah. multiple shofars. I was, Jesse and I went to a Jesus culture worship concert, uh, like con- conference once and banning leaves the head of Jesus culture had, I don't know if actually you read this one. Uh, it was, uh, they had in the back left corner in the balcony is where he had the shofar section. Uh, like yeah. he made the flag people oh, and the shofar section. people. Yeah. Because otherwise mm. they'd come up to the front. So they mm. banned them all up in the front and he put them in the back co- corner of the balcony and they were over there like, burr, burr. Oh, you can man. hear them back in the back. It, it's hard to do it. It's hard to blow a shofar. Like most <laughs> so, people yeah, are like a skill. hyped up and they're like, and they, and when the time comes, they're like, they, they can't do it. That's so I don't worse. know if I'm supposed to tell this story or not, but I'm going to tell it. So I was in Nashville and I was at this church. I'm not going to name the name of the church. No, no, no. It was small, smallest, it's small. It was in the middle of the hood. And apparently Justin Bieber's mom, I have no clue whether it was Justin Bieber's mom or not, was there. And this was, this was 
over a decade ago. And she's like, pray for my son because he's, he grew up in, in church, but, um, pray for, pray for my son. The industry is trying to get him right. Next thing I know, guys bring out shofars and mm. swords and they mm. pray for like an hour. Yeah. Swords. And it was just like between, yes, I don't know what the heck the swords yeah, were for. I've seen that. But they just like guys were, it was like some Viking stuff, bro. Like, no lie. I, I don't even know if that was Justin Bieber's mom. It, it could be it could have been just a <laughs> random white lady that was that was finessing the son. game, but yeah. Just yes, but she said she was Justin Bieber's mom. I just remember shofars and swords. So man, the Checks charismatic out. I grew up Pentecostal. I grew up PAW, Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. It could get weird. Like mm-hmm. it can get weird, but it's a beautiful thing though. I, I, I loved every moment of those shofars. It was going out. Burr, burr. Well, I love yeah. the saxophone and the short clip that I saw. It totally <laughs> it beautiful. elevated the entire the whole whole situation. Yeah. All right. There's more feedback where that came from. Go check it out. Okay, it's time for this week's editorial question of the week. Hey. All right. Well, at the beginning of the show, Jesse was talking about you do you're sounding more and more like the get off my lawn kind of cranky old man. It's the opposite. I'm I'm more of hey. I'm I not to get off my lawn. I'm, what happened to everybody? We were like, we were what's all what's the deal with customer service? We were anyway, Jesse was here. talking about customer service, bad customer ex- <laughs> customer service experience, and it got us thinking. We all see the Karen clips, stuff like that, but it is getting common. Like we're seeing stuff in real life. This isn't just on the internet. This is like we're all experiencing it. So we want to know the most uh, awkward or bad customer service experience you've seen. Hit us up on X at Relevant Podcast, and we'll read our favorites on next week's show. If you want to talk about bad customer service, when the Popeye's chicken sandwich first came oh, out, that's when you would see run some out? bad customer. Listen, I oh. know someone that went to jail because oh. he was working. He was working at Popeye's, and somebody was talking crazy to him over this chicken sandwich, and he came behind the counter and Ooh. body slammed the person. Wow! It's see, I've seen those the, clips on on the internet, yeah. but not in real life. I, that person I don't personally was no know deal. the person, but it's too too. You know, I know someone that knows somebody. They were like, "Oh yeah, that's so and so and so who uh, grandma will live over on the west side," and I was like, "It is." So yeah, that's wow. the craziest Man. thing I've ever seen. They literally body slam somebody in a Popeyes. Wow! <laughs> you gotta love that chicken from Popeyes. Yeah, love right. that chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hit us up. That was a good joke, I think. <laughs> All right. Love that chicken from Popeyes. <laughs> All right, well, before we wrap things up, um, I want to thank Derwin Gray for joining us. I, he didn't come on to promote anything, but I, we just saw him talking about stuff online that like was timely and important, and, and we wanted to bring him on to ex- expand on that conversation. Uh, I love it when we get a chance to do that. But do follow him on social media and uh, check out his books. Like I mentioned, his 2022 one, How to Heal Our Racial Divide. Uh, he's also got The Good Life, Limitless Life, God Do Hear Me, and a bunch of others. Check him out on Amazon. Um, also, while you're checking things out online, check out issue 114 of Relevant. It features amazing conversations with uh, King's Kaleidoscope, Rain Wilson, Julie Chen Moonvez, uh, Mike Todd, Brooke Lidgerwood, and others. You can read it for free at relevantmagazine.com. Just click the magazine tab. It is presented by The Covenant, streaming now on Apple TV. All right. On that note, we'll wrap it up. I'm Cameron Strang. I'm Jesse Carey. I'm Derek Miner. I'm Marty. Oh, I got a new single out with Miles Minnick, Mission, and DKG Kai called One Squad. We drop on a project called Highlight Tapes next week. It's going to be crazy. I know some of y'all said y'all was going to... Uh, next Friday? Next Friday is the full yeah, album. So we dropping, and then- we're dropping a single today, full album. Listen, I know y'all had New Year's resolutions. Y'all know I don't do them, but I know y'all did it. Y'all said y'all was going to lose 20 pounds. This album is going to help. This album's going to help because you probably went up about 10 pounds. Ooh. It's a gym and album, okay. huh? It's okay. This is for the gym. This is going to help you get back right. Love it. So get the single, and then next week we're going to do the album, and y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for listening to The Relevant Podcast. Check out our features, interviews, and news updates every day at RelevantMagazine.com. And make sure to follow Relevant on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest. For more great podcasts, browse the shows on the Relevant Podcast Network, which you can find at our site. And while you're there, don't miss the all-new era of Relevant Magazine. A new issue releases every other month at RelevantMagazine.com.
I didn't get my pleasure and I make no apologies. <laughs> Relevant Podcast Network.